Good morning, this is Marshall Davis. There is a theme that runs throughout the Bible that points to the heart of non-dual reality. It is expressed most clearly in the book of, of Exodus. Moses asked to see God's glory and God responds saying, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. The story continues in a humorous way. God says that even though Moses cannot see his face, he agrees to give Moses a glimpse of his backside if he wants. And he tells Moses to stand on the mountainside and God says that he will hide him in the cleft, in the cleft of, a, of a rock, in a crevice in other words. And the, God says that he will cover Moses with his hand as he passes by. Then God says this, then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. I still remember my Old Testament professor in seminary laughing about this. For when God says that he would show God his backside, he was referring, according to my seminary professor, Hebrew professor, he was referring to his buttocks. God, or at least the author of Exodus, was having a bit of fun here with the idea. Maybe I should have preached a sermon sometime on the buttocks of God, although I'm not sure that would go off well in the, in the community church here. Anyway, you get the point. The Bible repeatedly says that no one can see God and live. We see that back even before this Exodus passage. You see it in, in Genesis with the whole story of, of Jacob wrestling with the angel who is symbolic of, of God. Throughout the Bible, God is described as holy, and it says that no mortal can be in the presence of a holy God. When the prophet Isaiah has a vision of the holy God on his throne, he remarks, Woe is me, for I am undone. For I have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah is shaking in the presence of God. I love the phrase he uses here. I am undone. And I have spoken about that often. Isaiah feels like he's falling apart. Like he is disintegrating in the presence of God. Which was exactly my own experience. The New Testament repeats this theme. In the prologue of the Gospel of John, the author says, No one has ever seen God. And yet, it goes on to say that Jesus has made him known. In other words, God, you could say, is filtered through Jesus. It is a well-worn sermon illustration that says that saints are like stained glass windows. They are people through whom the light of God shines. In the Bible, people glimpse God indirectly or partially, but never fully. In fact, Exodus says that Moses used to go into the tent of meeting and speak with God face to face, which seems at first to be a contradiction to what we have been talking about here. But this description is, is the same passage of Scripture where it also says, that you cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. In the tent of meeting, Moses is apparently speaking with God, but I guess not seeing God, you could say. Even so, when Moses came out of these meetings with God, his face shone with the glory of God. And even that reflected glory was too much for the people of Israel. So they insisted that he wear a veil over his face to protect them from the radiated, reflected glory of God's presence. And there are passages, other passages in the New Testament. The book of Hebrews talks about Moses and Mount, about Mount Sinai and fire on the mountain, earthquakes. And then it ends saying that we have an unshakable kingdom. And says, for our God is a consuming fire. God consumes us. Now that's enough Bible quoting for the moment. The point 
of this theme throughout the Bible is that being in the presence of God destroys us in some way. It shakes us to the core. We cannot survive it. We are consumed by the consuming fire of God's presence. The foundation of our lives are shaken, says the psalmist. But what remains and cannot be shaken is eternal. In other words, the ego, the separate self, cannot survive the presence of God. The little self is consumed in the fire of the one true self of the universe, which is God. The false self burns up in the presence of true self, in the presence of the one true God, the one divine self. All false selves disappear. There's only one reality, and that is God. This is non-dual reality. Like a fire, it consumes all others. It shakes the foundations of our lives. And what remains, what is unshakable, is real. It's a wonderful line spoken by John the Baptist in the Gospel of John. Speaking of Christ, John says, He must increase, I must decrease. Now in context, he's speaking about his ministry and his reputation. But it has a deeper spiritual meaning as well. The ego and God cannot coexist. The ego must decrease and God must increase. The spiritual life is about letting go of ego until there is no more. Until there is only God. And the closer we come to God, the more ego is burned away. James, the brother of Jesus, says, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. That instruction is then followed by talk about cleansing and purification. The spiritual life is drawing nearer and nearer to God until we are no more. Let me put it this way. Where God is, you are not. Where you are, God is not. Now I'm using the word you here in the sense of the human self, the ego. There's only room for, for one. And that one is God. There's no room for a second. God is one without a second, as the Upanishad says. Say, it's the same message of the Hebrew scripture where it says that God is God and there is no other. This is the Shahada of Islam. There is no God but God. These all point to the oneness, the non-duality of God. There are no other gods. All other gods are false gods. And that includes the God of the self, of our self. So let me say it again, where God is, you are not. Where you are, God is not. When we see God, or in Jesus' words, we see the kingdom of God, we see that we are not. What we mistakenly thought of as ourselves is not real. The ego is seen as nothing more than an illusion. There's only God. And where God is, there's nothing else. Where God is, we're not. And where we are, God is not. Now that takes a little bit more explaining. When we think that we are the ego and separate from God, then we can't see God. God is not. And this is what it means to be lost, to be spiritually lost. We are lost in illusion, lost in separateness. All we see is ourselves. And therefore, we see others as separate selves. And we see a separate world. That is hell. Here and now. And the result of this hell is sin, which is suffering, disharmony, and falsehood. Where you are, God is not. Meaning, God is not seen. In reality, there's no place or time where and when God is not. 
So when I say where we are, God is not, it does not mean there is some place God is not. I mean that when we identify the, with the ego, it seems like God is not, like God is not around, God is absent. In reality, God is omnipresent and is eternal. The kingdom of God is here now, but the ego does not see that. And the more we hold on to ourselves as ego, the less we're able to see God. But without the ego, when the ego falls away, this is all seen as eternal life. Heaven is oneness, you could say. It's the end of separateness. Heaven is non-duality. Hell is duality. Heaven is knowing our union with God. Hell is believing we are separate from God. Jesus describes this sense of separateness as outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is a picture of suffering caused by separation from God. It is suffering caused by believing that we are separate from God. That's the source of human suffering. In reality, we cannot be separated from God. The Apostle Paul says in that famous passage, What can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? In all these things we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God. This is an eternal truth. We are one. Only when we do not realize that do we feel like we are separate, separate from God. Then we experience all sorts of suffering and alienation and, and fear and a sense of sin. There's no fear in love. There's no sin in love. Perfect love casts out all fear, John says, and God is perfect love. No one can see God and live. Yet, when we realize that we are that no one, then this no one can see God and live. This is eternal life. And that is it for today. Grace and peace to you.